So recently I got to go hands-on with a, uh, a very early build of the Amplitude, I don't know what you call it, remake? Re-release? The, the new Amplitude, basically. I think that's the safest thing to call it, that is uh, coming sometime in 2015. Uh, now this is a game that Harmonix ran a, a ultimately a successful Kickstarter project for um, earlier this year. And uh, this is kind of the first time we've ever gotten to, to play it in a, in a public setting. This is the same build, by the way, that's going to be um, at the PlayStation Experience uh, in Las Vegas this weekend. So if you're in the area, you'll be able to play this exact demo. But basically, um, we got to play uh, five different songs, um, all of them original compositions from the upcoming game by Harmonix. So the game will have licensed songs. Uh, they announced a little bit of that in the Kickstarter. Some of the, like, Jordan Jonathan, Nana Monoguchi, C418, all that stuff. Um, but this build was just the original compositions, which the game is mostly built around. I mean, if you remember, a big chunk of the soundtrack in Amplitude and Frequency was uh, original Harmonix compositions, and this uh, is no different. Um, and they've actually tied it a little bit more fundamentally into, um, into what the game is here. So um, the songs are all female vocalists, and that's because this game is about an all-female protagonists. Um, the, the narrative that they've said is in there is very, very light, very passive, but if you listen closely, basically, the interesting thing about it, I think, is that um, the lyrics tell the story of what's going on in the game, and they have sort of recurring vocalists who will come back and reprise their roles, and um, those same vocalists will be sort of performing the narratives of the same characters, and so if you listen closely, you can kind of piece together the narrative, um, or at least you'd be able to if I wasn't talking over it. Um, but yeah, it's it's mechanically, fundamentally exactly what you'd expect. This song here is called Decode Me. They also mentioned that uh, the song titles are, um, they play into the story as well. So basically the, the overall premise here is that there is a, and I, this is like third-hand information, I might totally, uh, misquote this, but essentially, um, this game is taking place in the brain of one female scientist. The year is, whatever, the future, 2112 or something like that, and a female scientist who has synesthesia is, uh, trying to help replicate synesthesia in other people, uh, and something happens, technology happens, and nanomachines, and, and then more nanomachines, and then, uh, she gets trapped, basically. She's sort of in a coma, um, and uh, you are playing as the other scientist, uh, basically going in here trying to uh, free her from this self-imposed musical coma. Um, and the lyrics all attest to that. Um, but yeah, it's it is um, it's Amplitude. Like I was a really really big Amplitude uh, fan, and to a lesser extent Frequency. I played them both, but I really loved Amplitude. And uh, this is so exactly what you'd want out of a new Amplitude game. I think uh, the thing that struck me most when I first played this was uh, the background visuals in particular. Like, they've, they've said over and over, it's this very early, this is a pre-alpha demo build, not at all final, but um, these backgrounds are, I think, very successfully evocative of the concept art that we saw in that Kickstarter. The Kickstarter was interesting because we didn't really have uh, gameplay to go off of necessarily. It was mostly just the premise, the promise of a new Amplitude game, and some really gorgeous concept art, but I, this is pretty reflective of what that art looked like, and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. Um, so all the abilities that you may remember uh, from Amplitude are, I, as far as I can tell, are making a return here. They've just sort of been renamed. So the sedate power-up that I have here um, is basically the slowdown power-up from Amplitude, and it sort of slows the track down. Um, and then there are other ones. Uh, Cleanse is now the name for Auto Blaster, which just uh, completely clears the path uh, that you're on currently. And it, I, I should probably back up a little bit. If you haven't played Amplitude before, how it works is each of these columns represent a different part of an electronic track. So there's vocals, there's uh, percussion, there's bass, there's lead synth. Um, here we go. So you can kind of hear it build as you sort of play the tracks and bring them back to life. So I totally missed that here. Another thing I should say, big disclaimer, is that uh, you're watching, this footage here is me playing Amplitude while having a conversation uh, with harmonics representatives about Amplitude, and anyone who's played Amplitude or any rhythm game um, can attest to the fact that it is hard to talk and play a rhythm game well at the same time. So, But I was actually really surprised at how easy it is to get back into it. It's the same controls that you remember from Amplitude. Uh, so L1 for the left beats, uh, R1 for the middle beats, and R2 for the right beats. And my, I was actually at first a little worried about that because Obviously, the, the triggers on the PS4 controller, the DualShock 4 and the DualShock 3, are different from the triggers um, on the PS2 controller. Uh, and they're a little, there's more throw to them, they're a little softer. But in playing it, it never really bothered me. I don't. I wish I could tell you why, but it just it felt okay. Uh, and that's, you can also still use the face buttons, of course. Um, and then you use X to deploy powers. Um, so that first song we played is called Decode Me. 
Uh, the song you're hearing now is called uh, Wetware, Wet Wave. I can't read my own handwriting. That's I'm professional. Um, and yeah, as you can see, uh, how it works is you'll want to like clear out a row, it'll melt away, and then you want to continue your combo by uh, sort of seamlessly moving from row to row without making mistakes. And these notes that are separate colors are power up. So that's a cleanse power up. So I can just use it on one of these tracks to kind of wipe, wipe it away. Um, See, they're talking about brains. The way that they, they sort of pitched that uh, element of it is that it's sort of uh, roughly equivalent to like a concept album, musically. Uh, so that's the way they're looking at it. And they've also, um, they've sort of gotten a bit more specific with what they're doing musically. If you remember Amplitude and Frequency were like a mishmash of garbage, not garbage, like as a pejorative, but literally the band Garbage was in one of those games, P.O.D. was in there, like, it was, there was electronic music, you had like BT and everything, but you also had maybe some rock and roll songs that weren't excellent tonal fits, and it wasn't really clear what they were going for. In this game, because it's like, you know, 2014, it's like a decade later, um, it makes sense, I think, to go completely electronic, and that's what they're choosing to do with the soundtrack. It's all electronic music, and I think that makes sense, because like, electronic music is no longer a genre, it is a medium, and you can accomplish so much within that medium, and I think even within these, uh, these five songs that we got to play, um, you can see a real breadth and variety um, musically. And this build was uh, was put together, I think, pretty rapidly uh, for PlayStation Experience, so that's why you're only seeing gameplay here. The menus and stuff aren't really ready uh, or anywhere near final. Um, but yeah, you'll notice that the health bars are on the left and right side of the screen, and uh, when you get to a low health, uh, it not only does that bar dwindle, you uh, actually get sort of like a, a burn on the outside of the screen, kind of like an FPS, so that sort of cloudy, bloody view. Uh, just to let you know without having to look away, uh, just using peripheral vision, that uh, you're in danger. You gain health every checkpoint. The checkpoints aren't really illustrated in this build, but um, and also by just clearing a sequence. So like when I hit these two notes here, I get a little health back. Fun piece of trivia here. They mentioned that uh, they got a local uh, choir in Boston to come through for this the recording of this song. They recorded it in uh, the a, a I think an employee's basement. I'm remembering that right. And what you might notice there is you see that I can jump from the rightmost row to the leftmost row. That is kind of a returning feature uh, that wasn't in amplitude but was in frequency. Because if you remember, frequency was uh, built around these sort of tubes. Um, and uh, in that tube, you could kind of cycle around very quickly. Uh, what they decided to do is keep it uh, relatively planar and relatively flat, just like amplitude was, but. By double tapping left when you're in the leftmost row, you can jump to the rightmost row, and by double tapping right when you're in the rightmost row, you can jump to the leftmost row. Um, they haven't made any decisions on that uh, in terms of like whether it's always going to be a double tap or a single tap. They're having internal arguments apparently about how to best control that. But um, that's a helpful as like that feature came in, in handy a lot. All right, there's there's my first use of the uh, slowdown ability. And I should also point out, like, this is a Kickstarter that I was really excited to see. I was, like, I remember, I've been obsessed with music and rhythm games my entire life, and this game is, like, in particular, it's exciting to me because I remember seeing Amplitude and Frequency, and I had never seen a Western-developed music game before. I wasn't aware of harmonics. This was, like, before Guitar Hero came out. Um, but I saw these games, and I was like, wow, this is a rhythm game made, like, outside of Japan. That's kind of unusual. Um... And getting to play Amplitude again just feels great. And also, uh, another thing I should say is that I played uh, normal difficulty at first, just to kind of get back into the flow of things. What I found, actually, 
and this might line up with your experience with with other rhythm games if you've ever like spent the time to get pretty decent at a rhythm game is uh, I actually found when I switched up to hard it was easier for me to play because the notes lined up better and this is true of like Guitar Hero and Rock Band too the notes lined up better with the real notes in the songs um, and they aren't sort of like spread out and distant uh, sort of to make them easier so uh, I actually found hard a little easier to play than normal. Um, what you'll also see here is uh, um, I, we showed off a little bit of the uh, an expert note chart just to have a sense of what that looks like. There we go. So, so this is a little bit of multiplayer here, um, and it works kind of the way you remember it from Amplitude. Um, same sort of power-ups are all in place here. Uh, I, can't put, I think I'm the Sedate. green ship? I can't remember. I think so. Disrupt. I should note, the Disrupt ability is not in the game yet. This is a pre-op build, it's like obviously not finished. What the Disrupt ability did, um, the equivalent of it in frequency was the ability where uh, you use it on an opponent's track and it makes it like wobble and makes it much harder to read. Uh, that's not yet in the game. Um, and one thing that they're really proud of uh, in this game is um, how small the numbers are, which is to say <clears throat> how, uh, how there aren't just a bunch of zeros tacked on at the end of your high scores, how they're very small uh, numbers that are easy to... Uh, to sort of compare and contrast. So it's not like scores of like 100,000 versus 90,000. Like there are some very, very close games. Um, it, at least this is one of them. I mean, like look look how close our scores are. Um, alrighty. Did you hear that? They said frequency right there in the lyrics. The eject ability, which you saw right there, uh, allows you to go to someone else's row and kind of kick them off of it. So if you're in the middle of a combo, that is a totally awful and frustrating thing to do to them. Multiply is another uh, returning power that uh, does exactly what you think it does. It just doubles your multiplier. Um, the way that it works also uh, in multiplayer is that uh, <clears throat> whoever gets to a lane first owns that lane. Which is to say, uh, if I'm in this lane and then see the blue player moved on to me, uh, she can't take it from me because I'm already there first. And that's kind of how they settle apart. Because like, if you're if you're playing with two good players, it kind of becomes a battle of where. There are very few active lanes at a given time at certain points in the song, and so there is an actual uh, element of skill to making sure you're in a lane fast enough to uh, get started on it when the lane comes back. It's a close one. I can't remember. I think I won this game. Just barely. Yeah. Alrighty. And then here, uh, so, uh, second to last song here, I want to show off... Uh, Another note chart for Decode Me. Um, this note chart is the expert 
tracks, just to give you a sense of what it's like on the hardest difficulty. Um, and what I've got here also is uh, a video of what the controller looks like when you're doing this. So, um, one really cool detail about this game that I love is that the uh, PS4 light bar actually lights up co in correspondence with whatever track you're on. So because uh, we're on the yellow percussive track right now, it's yellow, but now, or sorry, we're on the, uh, right here, blue is bass, I believe. So not only do the lights flash in time with the song, and not the controller rumbles a little bit too in time with the song, uh, but the light bar lights up, and uh, to hear them tell it, uh, if you do it in a, like if you're playing the game in a sort of dark room with the light bar turned up all the way, it kind of turns your room into this like colorful, <laughs> like rave is what they said. Um, which is, I don't know, I love stuff like that. I, I feel like we haven't seen people use the light bar in a terribly inventive way, except for like Johann Sebastian Joust. Um, and it's cool to see that be a part of this game. And as you might expect, the expert tracks get pretty challenging here. Uh, and here's what I was talking about when you start losing. The edges of the screen get a little glitchy and fuzzy. Oh, that's very low health. Yeah. That's what losing looks like in this build. And then here is the uh, last song. Um, this is called Recession. Um, and before that was Astrocyte, and the song before that was called Perfect Brain, just so you know. Um, and the reason I mention that is because these song names play, they factor into the plot of the game in a pretty fundamental way. So this is me playing on, uh, Recession on Hard. Um, there we go. And I immediately felt so much more comfortable when I finally jacked the difficulty up to Hard. Like, this is, this lines up with my memories of playing Amplitude. Ugh, this is so awesome. Yeah, I'm like pretty thrilled for this game. They haven't announced a release date yet, it's outside of 2015. Um, they have said it's going to be $19.99 and available on the PS3 and PS4 as a cross-buy game. So if you buy it on one system, you automatically get it on the other for free. Um, and they don't have any plans yet for a, a Vita version. It's theoretically possible, although I'd be interested to see how they choose to uh, sort of do the controls for that. That would be the biggest question for me. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, theoretically they could do that too someday if it's, uh, if the game does well for them. It's weird, Amplitude I'm finding is one of those games that, um, uh, almost everyone knows what it is and has heard of it, but not everyone has played it. Uh, I keep talking to people about it, and I'm like, yeah, I got to play Amplitude. They're like, oh yeah, I've heard of that, but I never played it. And I'm like, well, shit. Now's your chance, because um, Amplitude is, is an incredible rhythm game, I think. It's it's wholly unique, and it, I think it's even distinct from Rock Band Blitz um, and Rock Band Unplugged. Like, they, uh, it's actually something I talked to them about, too, is I was like, how do you, when you go out to, when they set out to make this game, uh, what are the major differences, as far as they're concerned, between this and Rock Band Unplugged? And their main answer was that uh, in Rock Band Unplugged and in Rock Band Blitz, um, all the music in that game um, was obviously, like, pop music or popular music that was pre-made um, and wasn't necessarily uh, built perfectly for a game like this. Whereas in this game, um, all the songs that you play in it, or at least all the harmonic sensor songs, are written uh, to be as fun as possible. So they build, they have constant notes, there aren't these like long boring bass sections or sections without vocals traditionally. Uh, they just try to build them around making them as playable as possible. And their songwriting is affected by the game design, um, which isn't true in Rock Band Blitz because that's just the nature of the game. Um, they're trying to make uh, songs that are fun songs first and are also good songs, but the gameplay is, is so central to this game. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty pretty pumped to see more of this down the line. It's a uh, I the, just the idea of, of rhythm games coming back in any meaningful way is always exciting to me. Uh,
Oh, another thing to note is that uh, the multiplayer in this game goes up to four players, which in technically I think Amplitude had four players as well, but that was on the PS2, so you would have needed the multi-tap add-on to use it. Uh, in this game, it just natively supports four DualShock 4s or DualShock 3s out of the box, um, which is great. I, I didn't, I don't have footage of it, but I did play a four-player match, and it was, it was ridiculous and actually kind of fun. Um, the amount of goofy power-ups that were happening. Anyways, that was a look at uh, at Amplitude. This is a pre-alpha build of the game, obviously. Um, but yeah, thank you, thank you for watching this. I do videos like this all the time. Um, you can subscribe if you want to see more from me. And yeah, I'll see you next time.